Hey, welcome to Flying Wheels. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels, and usually I am pretty sprightly at my introductions, and today, I have to be honest with you, I am exhausted. I mean, I look beat up, I can tell. You can say in the comments, I look old and tired, because I am. And today is kind of a somber video, and like a real one. I want to explain some stuff that's going on and get real with you guys. I mean, most of my videos are like, hey, look at this car that I flipped, and how much money I made, and life is so great, and you know, I have a lake house, which life is so great, and I'm so blessed in so many ways, and this is isn't just going to be a rant. I want it to be honest and truthful and show you the downside of what it's like being not just a car dealer, but a business owner. And it is really a tough time right now. And today I'm going to explain to you for so many reasons why my business is failing. And I'm going to get down and dirty and explain in detail, and it's not political, of what's going on and why. So my name is Craig from Flying Wheels, and I own a car dealership. And as you can see, everything is in disarray. It's 7.30 in the evening on a Tuesday or when I don't even know what day it is. I think it's Wednesday. And I have a thousand things to do. I came in early. I came in today bright and early because I wanted to accomplish some stuff and I didn't accomplish any of those things because basically the way I can explain what I do is constantly putting out fires. So as a business owner, I'm constantly putting out fires, solving problems, making sure everybody has what they need so they can do their job. The problem is I don't really get to do my job because I'm management, so I'm just managing, making sure everyone else can do what they need to do. Now today I had a to-do list for myself as well and literally zero of it got accomplished because I was doing everyone else's jobs. Craig, what do you mean you were doing everyone else's jobs? I am stretched too thin. So what do I mean by I'm spread too thin? Well, part of the reason my business is failing is my own personal fault. I thought I could rely on people more than I guess I could. I put a manager in charge of my shop. I put a video editor in charge of my videos and my production and all that. I have somebody else taking care of my start your dealership programs where I'm teaching people how to run their businesses. And I also have builders and contractors building other projects for me. And I just kind of oversee everything to make sure it happens. Well, what happens is I took on too many projects because I thought I could rely on other people to work as hard as I do. And you can't. Nobody cares about you and your business as much as you do. So it's just, if you set yourself up that way, it's bound for failure which is sad to say, like you need to be able to trust and rely on your managers, which is what I thought I could do and it didn't work out that way. And honestly, I've learned quite a lesson recently. I've taken on a lot of projects because I, I'm a hard worker and an overachiever and I'm constantly moving. And if you're a business owner yourself, you're constantly looking for the next thing. What else can I do next? What else is there? What else is there? Let's keep growing. And if you're not growing, you're dying. And, and all of those are true statements. But sometimes you get to stop and look around, smell the roses, you know that saying, and, and really observe and, and recognize. and and even slow down every once in a while which I haven't been doing. Now this video actually is going a completely different way than what my file says. Now months ago I started a folder for the video file that I was about to release today which is how I manage doing so many things all at once. And that was a terrible title but that's the idea of the topic. So I have a house I'm building up north. I have a steel building I'm building next to my rental properties. I have rental properties. I have YouTube. I also have brand partnerships with uh, companies that sponsor our videos to help our channel grow with products that I use. And then even like a perfect example is I have a car dealership. And I said that last. So that should be number one priority because that's the breadwinner. That's the main business that makes all the money and everything else revolves around that. But to be honest with you, owning a car dealership comes with a lot of work and a lot of stress. It is buying problems, figuring out what the problems are and solving them. And then, you know, I, I've just grown and I've grown and I've grown and I've just kept growing so fast, especially through COVID. I was just hustling as hard as I could. It was like, everybody had money and I'm going to take it. And everybody that's willing to give it to me, I'm going to grab it. So just keep it going. I'm going to keep hustling and keep hustling, keep hustling. And now things are starting to slow down. And I am like, my boots are on the ground. I see what's happening oftentimes before anybody else does because people People need cars or they don't need cars and they have a surplus and they want to spend money on surplus cars so if you're buying a Civic because you absolutely need that car like times could be tough. But if you're buying Corvettes and boats and all this stuff, hey, times are probably pretty good. So I get to see like, what is the economy like in real life with my boots on the ground? That's what I meant. Now the auto industry has always just been what it is. Cars are negotiable, prices are negotiable, cars need repairs, we do the repairs, we sell them with warranties and everything, you know, kind of what's your best price type of deal. Well, not recently, not in the past two years. And in the past two years, it's not what's your best price, that's laughable. It's do you still have this car? And just like the housing market, First come, first serve. Whoever shows up with the money gets the car. I mean, there is, it is what it is. Somebody wants to look at this Cadillac XDS and I'm asking 99.95, let's say for example. Is it negotiable? 
No, honestly, because I'm not gonna be able to replace that car. I'm not gonna be able to find a car like it to replace it to even sell to somebody. So I need to get what I can get for it. And the customer says, okay, I understand. That's how the times are right now. Here's your $99.95. Prices are non-negotiable. Well, you might see that there's an empty spot right here. And there's an empty spot over there. And my garage actually has some empty spots too. And it's not news to anybody that it's hard to replace inventory, which is why prices are so high. When supply is low or inventory is low, prices increase, it's supply and demand in the chain. That's how it works well right now the demand is high the supply is low and that increased the prices and that is what inflation is it's really difficult when everybody wants something and you don't have it the price goes up and that's the way it's been for the past few years well we went through a trickle effect or a butterfly effect that nobody has really noticed until right now and that is inflation and inflation is not the excuse that I'm using to why my business is failing that's just one of the reasons now I worked really really hard and if you know German German works for me worked worked for me and that's a whole different video that's coming out after this video. German and I have been working really, really hard. And the way I said it to him two years ago was, German, that faucet is on. It's running. People have money and they're spending it. And while that faucet's on, I'm gonna fill as many glasses with that water as we can. Let's just keep taking it in. Work as hard as we can because we don't know when that faucet's going to be turned off. Well, I'm telling you right now, that faucet is turning off. And again, it's not political and it's not just inflation. It's a common combination of everything and this is one of the reasons of this video that I'm talking about there's gonna be more in a minute so literally every vendor I have has increased their prices this year from insurance to propane to heat my building to electricity to internet to even my dumpster everything has gone up in price significantly I mean like more than 25% so let's just say across the board all of my vendors increase their prices 25% what does that mean to me I either take a 25% pay cut or I also increase my prices by 25% which isn't really something that I want to do to my customers either I don't want to have to just keep this flow of increased inflation and pass it on and pay it forward and pay it forward and everyone's gonna suck it up and it's going to stay but it is what it is and to be honest with you some of my vendors are just doing it to go with it they don't necessarily have to increase my prices but they are because they can and they're making record profits still we're getting taken advantage of as small business owners and this remember that what I just said we're getting taken advantage of small business owners because I'm gonna I'm gonna use that as a segue into the next topic so when everything goes up in price for me everything goes up in price for you so it's not that we're making more money I'm actually working harder than I ever have in the past few years to make less than I did in the last two years everything is more expensive and we're making less money our profit after everything after all expenses is lower than it was a year or two years ago and this isn't just a car dealer thing it's across the board for all small business owners we are all struggling we are all working hard now this is the perfect segue into discussion number two you will see I'm here by myself at 7 30 at night I am like dirty gross I sliced my hand today and I have to work on this car today the Corvette I had to work on today I am still gonna pull that Honda Ridgeline in because I sold it tonight and I have to grind the wheels down and clean them up and I have to do brake pads and rotors and I have to wash that car because the customers coming first thing in the morning to pick it up and I have to go to the auction so I have to make sure it's ready for when they get here and like today it wasn't like I wasn't doing anything today I cleaned that entire van which is our flipping $400 into a Ferrari van. that limo to be honest with you one of the most fun cars I've ever had and if that, if that video hasn't aired yet completely different topic to that than this one it's not somber it really makes me smile as you can tell that Hearst limo is like literally the most fun car I've ever owned so stay tuned for that vehicle but Craig why are you here doing these things by yourself well this is that butterfly effect from COVID that's happened and it's a trickle-down effect that is now really really hitting us I am losing employees like it is so hard to keep employees on all levels not just base pay employees which nobody is uh, what do you call it see I don't even know what it's called um, minimum wage no I, I have literally never paid anybody minimum wage not even high school kids and with that topic in mind high school kids were really helpful around here they can push brooms they can take out trash they can move tires and wheels and wash cars for me really really helpful and I would pay them typically 10 to 12 dollars an hour and they'd be learning a skill and it was it worked well because they'd be learning how to change oil how to change rotate tires, how to fill air pressure, and just general maintenance and hard work. And I was paying a fair wage to a kid and they were happy about it. Well now, Home Depot and Walmart and like our local grocery store is paying $15, $16 an hour to 14, 15, 16 year olds. McDonald's is paying even more. It's like all the big box stores are paying more and then charging us 
increased prices, you're paying their employees more, which congratulations to the employees. But logic says, why would I work for Craig when Walmart's gonna pay me more money? Now I had a really helpful high school student working here for several months and he was really just an asset to the business. And he left because Home Depot is willing to pay him significantly more money to just water their plants, just keep their plants watered. That's all he has to do. It's a no brainer. Why would he not leave me to go work for them? Now pay is just one of the problems. Craig, pay them more, Craig, pay them more, pay them more. Well, that is in relation to what I said in topic one. You just keep paying out as a business owner. You keep paying out, but you're not making the same amount of money as you were a year or two or three years ago. The money that our business has been adjusted to making on the level that we've been growing to. I can't just keep paying out and then everyone has increased their prices and their salaries on me and then I'm stuck with nothing. I mean, it's worth shutting the doors for sometimes and that's going to kill a lot of small businesses. So the big box stores are actually going to kill small business. Now I said I wouldn't get political and I'm not going to, but during elections, some people were pushing higher minimum wages, right? They wanted a higher minimum wage and people were fighting it. How can we have a $10 minimum wage? Now I've never paid less than $10. So it, like even if no, it doesn't matter to me, but it didn't get voted in, but they somehow pushed it anyway, because now like no one works for under 12 to 14, 15, $16 an hour. And that's like your basic pay. I'm talking your lowest level jobs. You can push a broom, you can move wheels for me, you can wash a car. Now let's talk about skills labor. It goes all the way up the tier. And I'm going to talk about in topic three, what that means. Now I had said German and I were working as hard as we could to get as much as we could while that faucet was running. We worked really, really hard and we took in as much as we could and we didn't know when the faucet was going to turn off. Well, what happened was originally you couldn't get people to work because they were all on un unemployment. Remember that? That nobody wanted to work originally. That's long gone. Like that is no longer a complaint anymore. But then a lot of people worked from home and they proved that they could work from home by working really, really hard and proving themselves. See employer, see Mr. Boss. I can, or Mrs. Boss, I can work from home. Well, that was two years ago. And laziness just slowly starts to settle in. Like you get used to being home, you get used to being on your own schedule and going to the gym when you're not supposed to be going and going out for lunch when you're not supposed to be going to it. Not everybody is self-motivated. Like a lot of business owners, like probably you guys watching me, are self-motivated. You can wake up, I can get all of my stuff done and I can, I, I end up working late too, but it has to be done. A lot of people are like employees because they need a deadline and they need tasks and rules to follow and they need like an agenda. But if they're they're working from home still. A lot of them don't want to go back to work because they're adjusted to like this laissez-faire attitude where they just come and go and get their work done on their own schedule. And to be honest with you, and knowing from personal experience, a lot of it is falling through the cracks now and laziness is settling in. What do I mean by that? I am an employer. I have personally someone that works from home for me and I'm not going to say who or what or why or in what company. I can tell you that the to-do lists and task lists are not getting done. They're falling through the cracks. It's hard to get in touch with people. They're working hours that they feel like they're comfortable working at. Like, oh, I worked from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. I don't need you to work from 7 to 10 p.m. But if it works well for you and you want to go to the gym in the middle of the day, fine, as long as the work gets done. But if I need to get in touch with you during business hours and your phone is off the hook or not near you or you're not answering, we have a problem. That is a problem. And that's the world you live in now where people have adjusted to like making their own schedule, but things are falling through the cracks. There's more. Now there's a level of entitlement. So like you can go get a job anywhere. There's a couple more topics I want to talk about. All of them kind of relate to each other. Well, now we're in a world where like people are entitled. You can get a job anywhere. And if you don't like the job you have, F you, I'm out. I'm going to go somewhere else because they need my help. That doesn't make you a better employee. That actually makes you a shitty employee and an unloyal employee. Like stick around and put in the hard work because your employer has most likely taken care of you and put up with the COVID nonsense to make sure everyone is comfortable throughout this whole thing that's been happening to all of us. But because so many employers need the help, we're willing to take less. I mean, Sebastian Maniscalco is a comedian. One of the funniest things I ever heard was, you're, I'm not even gonna try to impersonate him, but you're getting the scabs right now. Like, I don't know where everybody is, but you're getting like the bench warmers. You're not getting those A players anymore. I don't know where all the A players are, but all I'm getting is scabs, lunatics, or people that just don't want to work but want more money because they know they can go somewhere else. It sucks. And that's at all levels, which brings me into the next topic. We're freaking tired. 
I am tired. So when everybody went on unemployment and collected, a lot of us kept working really, really hard and we had to pick up the slack for all those people that didn't come back to work. And I'm not just talking about bosses, I'm talking about the employees too. Like those people that didn't come back, somebody had to meet that quota. Somebody had to make things happen and we were working extra hard while some people were just collecting checks. And then everything got desperate because we needed employees. We started offering money for people to come back and paying more. Now we're getting those scabs to come back and they're getting paid more but not working as hard people are picking up the slack someone is picking up the slack and that is like a lot of people I'm just think about teachers in general teachers and nurses and first responders and essential workers all those people are getting just abused right now and they're tired of it it's been two and a half years and we're exhausted from it and we don't want to put up with it anymore so what do you do you just say F it I'm out I can't do it anymore I quit so now we have like really good workers and business owners that have been abused for so long that they're just tired of it and they're done and they're leaving or shutting the doors like I consider shutting my doors all the time all the time I'm like you know what just forget it I've been saving my money I could just stop working I'm done but that's not who I am I need to keep working but it's adding levels of stress to me just like it is everybody else and there's nurses that, and there's teachers that I know they're just like you know what I quit I'm in my 40s I don't even care I'll find something else to do like you hate your job because you've been treated so poorly or you've been overworked by necessity for so long that you're like I don't know I'll just figure it out and if you don't think that's a real thing it absolutely is now Craig what do you mean that your business is failing honestly my business is failing. Like I could shut my doors. We're doing well. Let me start by saying we're doing fine. We're paying our bills and we're comfortable and everything's fine. But everybody took a pay cut and it sucks. And I can't find good reliable employee like forget about it i can't find bench warmers i can't get anyone to push brooms and help me out that have zero skills like no qualifications at all i can't even hire them because they'll go somewhere else that pays more now i discussed how tired those overworked people are i'm one of them like i am seriously considering i love making youtube videos and they make me really happy and i'm so backed up that i just shut my business down. I am on appointment only hours. I am on summer hours. It is summertime. And this logic that I have is the logic of so many other people. I just say, you know what? It's not worth it. Forget it. Google, cars.com, cars. .com. All those websites, I change my hours to buy appointment. I am not even open on Saturdays. I'm a car dealership. I sell retail and I'm not even open on Saturdays. I'm going to take Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and I'm going up north. And that's it. I'm going to take the time to myself. I'm going to reassess my life and I'm going to spend more time with my family. And once things settle down and like normalize, you know what? Then I'll start to ramp it up, but I need time to myself. I need it for my mental health and I need it to spend with my family. I want to spend time on the house that I just got overworked building and I've been saving. I deserve it. And a lot of you guys do too, which is counterintuitive or counterproductive of what this video is about because a lot of us are tired and a lot of us need time off. But it's summer. You know what? I'm going to take it off. And once Labor Day comes, I'll reassess and I'll start ramping up my business from there. Now, forget the like chains. How does it hit home? I'm a business owner. I have friends that are business owners. My friend owns a fire suppression company. I don't ever see him. Why? Because he is doing all the labor. He's He runs the company. He does all the bookkeeping, all the marketing, all the customer service. And now he's the guy that's actually doing like the suppression systems and the cleaning for hoods for restaurants and things because he can't hire the help. And the help that he does hire is like the J squad like I had said before the bench warmers that don't even want to be there in the first place but he hires him because it's all he can get and then he fired them all and just does it on his own because it's just easier to not babysit everybody all right well I'm gonna keep going because I will another friend of mine owns a gym now personal trainers I get it when COVID happened the gyms closed they had to go find like other professions and things to do and then the gyms open back up and they already have new jobs well there's a whole new generation of kids that are personal trainers because it's been two and a half three years they're quitting I went to the gym the other day to go do like a fitness class there was literally no trainer at all there wasn't even a person at the front desk so I walked in no one at the front desk and I walked downstairs go to the gym class and it was crickets like I wrote the workout on the board and we worked on silence because we didn't know the iPad password at the front desk that was unmanned so we just kind of like worked that way with our headphones on to a workout that I wrote on the board. Like that's what it's like in the entire world. It's wild. So I am nervous for our future. I don't know what is gonna happen soon. Only time will tell. I can tell you that I'm starting to scale everything back. I'm starting to slow everything down intentionally and I'm going to try to get less stressed out and focus on what's important for a while. And I suggest all you guys do that as well. And if it's your business that's the most important, focus on it. If it's your family or your friends or your personal life and your mental health, focus on those things. You know, try to, we'll get through all this together. Business is good but it's not what it used to be so I hope you guys are doing well I hope this video was informative if it was do me a favor and give me a thumbs up just to help boost the algorithm if you haven't subscribed yet I give all my business tips as often as possible so I hope this was helpful I'll see you all later thanks for watching adios